Hello, hello people and welcome back to RDF Tactics YouTube page. It is RDF himself and today's video we have my very, very first tactic recreation of Football Manager 2021. I am so thrilled to be able to share it with you guys. Before we get into anything, at the moment I currently have 250 subscribers. I thank you guys so, so much. It is incredible how much this channel is rising and it hasn't even been a week yet. So thank you guys. If you are new to this channel or if you haven't yet, please go and subscribe and like this video. But let's get into it now. And the tactic we are creating is a 4-1-4-1 by Imino Alguacil over at Real Sociedad. In March 2018, Alguacil became the first team coach as interim manager only. In the summer of the same year, Real Sociedad then hired a permanent replacement but he didn't last long, only lasting till December. Alguacil then became first team coach once again as interim but following his strong start to the season, it was no surprise to anyone at that time that Real Sociedad offered him a full time contract to be their coach. Previously, his only coaching experience was with the reserve team. It was during the 2019 and 2020 season, Real Sociedad started to catch Europe's eye with very, very impressive performances, landing them a 6th place finish in the La Liga. How did they achieve this? The Spanish club were always a good side, Alguacil made them even better and one of the key areas that he managed to strengthen is the midfield. They have an exceptional young midfield. Igor Zubedila is the base of that midfield and arguably the area Real Sociedad mostly improved. Igor's new role in the system allowed the other two central midfielders to have the freedom to push higher in attack. Previously, it was considered a problem that they couldn't get a balance right in the central midfield, but now with Zubedila sitting further back, Sociedad now have a ball winner in front of that back line. Imino Alguacil's side like to dominate the ball and this reflects on the stats. During the 2019 and 20 season, they achieved a respectable 54.4% average possession. But they don't just play controlled possession, Raul Sociedad were also 4th highest with progressive passes and 4th highest with passes into the opposition's penalty area, playing forward risky passes was also a part of the young manager's game. Completing 7,556 15 to 30 yard passes whilst also managing 3,357 passes whilst under pressure from their opponent. Building from the back is key as Zubel Dia drops in between the two centre backs which is a trigger for both full backs to then push higher up the pitch to offer the natural width. Oyazabal and Porto who played as wingers played very narrow in the half spaces and acted as inside forwards. The two centre backs had to be comfortable on the ball as they were also given the licence to attack space when that space was presented. The two central midfielders Mikel Moreno and Martin Odegaard both had great seasons. Odegaard who played on the right hand side of the two liked to move into wider areas offering a passing option when building their attacks. Mikel Moreno who is athletic, technically gifted, intelligent plays an integral role for Algarsil's side. Moreno positions himself between the lines of the opposition. Again, this gives the team a passing option. Moreno likes to roam around because of this. He is left unmarked most of the time when he receives the ball. The narrowness of the wingers as well as the positions of the two central midfielders allows Real Sociedad to either link up in the middle of the pitch and penetrate centrally or build up centrally to create space and play the ball out to the wide fullbacks. This is how they create their chances with their crossing. Real Sociedad's front line and midfield is filled with athletic players and Alguacil utilises this well. Real Sociedad closes in the opposition and restricts their passing options as soon as their possession has been lost. They look to win the ball back high up the pitch, forcing the opposition to either play sideways, backward passes or even long balls into the air as Raul Sociedad's centre-backs are very, very comfortable with dealing with any aerial threat.
So now the key points for this recreation and how we're going to transform this into Football Manager 2021 when recreating in Football Manager, it is very likely you will have to compromise on certain stuff as certain real life movements are just not achievable in the game. But that doesn't stop you from then taking the main aspects so you can play like that team in Football Manager. So for this tactic specifically, after describing their style of play, the key elements to this tactics that we are going to transform into the football manager is attempting through balls often, control the game in the opponent's half, attack through the middle, play possession football, create chances using through balls and steal the ball from the opposition when they have possession. So here we are with the tactic for the formation. As you can see, we have lined up with the 4-1-4-1 formation. And in goal, we have a goalkeeper, which could also be a sweeper goalkeeper. But for this tactic, I actually did opt for the goalkeeper. For the fullback roles, both fullbacks are on the fullback role with attacking duty. For the left back, he is asked to cross from the byline, run wide with the ball and stay wider to try and maintain that width. Similar to the right back, but he also has dribble more to offer us a little bit more directness from the defence. For the centre back pairing, they are both ball playing defenders. For the instructions, they don't have any. The defensive midfielder, he is the halfback, so he will be looking to drop deep in between the two centre backs, which should then be the trigger for the two full backs to venture forward. His instruction is to pass it shorter and take fewer risk. Now, for the two wingers, we are using the inverted wingers. For the left winger, he's got to take more risk and get further forward in order to try and force a relationship between the left winger and the striker as Oyazabel and William Jose in real life had a very, very good understanding on the pitch. And for the right winger, he is also an inverted winger, but his only instruction is take more risks. For the central midfield pairing, for the Moreno role, we are using the box-to-box -box midfielder but because Moreno is energetic and he likes to operate in between the opposition's lines, so he will be looking to get forward whilst also tracking back and his only instruction is to take more risks. And for his midfield partnership where Martin Odegaard played, we have a Mazzala duty on attack. Now, if you notice, my midfield four all of their instructions all have to take more risk and that is because we are trying to take that progressive passing and through ball game from Alguacil's tactic in real life into the game. And for the lone striker up front, we have the pressing forward who is going to be the main trigger, the person that is setting the tempo for our closing down when we are out of possession. He will be holding up the ball, of course, to be linking up play with the rest of the team. But his only instruction that I have added is to move into channels to steal and try and occupy the opponent's defence to try and create more space for our runners inside and outside. For the tactical instructions for the mentality, we have gone with positive mentality. For the attacking width, we are on fairly narrow. To try and channel our play through the central areas, we want to start a lot of our play into the central areas to either penetrate in central areas, which the Mazala will be great at doing, or try and create space for the two fullbacks to operate down the flanks. For the approach play, we do have pass into space. Again, we are trying to create that high number of through balls and we do have overlap just on the right hand side. Now, the reason why I have overlap on the right hand side is because naturally we should have two overlaps happening because we have both fullbacks on attack whilst the two wingers have a support duty and get further forward is not encoded in them. But with the left winger, we do have get further forward. And like I said, the overlap should naturally happen on the right hand side. But now because the overlap is going to happen less on the left hand side we want it to happen on the right hand side with greater effect for the passing directness we have gone with the shorter passing to try and retain that possession but of course we don't want to retain it too much because we still want that progressive passing for the final third dribbling and creative freedom we have no special instruction for that which is of course fine a lot of football manager players think that you need to have lots and lots of instructions but that is simply not the case if we want to run at defense but not simply not use that instruction we can either just use roles that has dribble more encoded in them or we can add that dribble more instruction to players which would then instruct those certain players to dribble at the defense rather than majority of the team running at the defense if you want majority of the team running at defence, then of course this instruction will be fine. 
for our transition play when the possession has been lost we are going to counter press Alguacil likes to win possession as soon as possible especially in the last few seconds in real life if he does not win the ball within the last few seconds you will notice that his team actually starts to change shape it turns into more of a 4-4-2 and they start to drop off just a little bit so their press doesn't get beaten way too easily and for the goalkeeper distribution, we are going to be taking short goalkeeper kicks. He's not instructed to distribute it to anyone specifically, mainly because we want that option to either go long, to give it to the fullbacks, or to distribute it to our centre backs, even to the players on the flanks, mainly just to whoever is available and hoping that the keeper is going to pick the best option. And for out of possession, this is how we are shaped. For the defensive shape, we are using that offside trap, mainly because we are using the high defence line and of course that is what Alguacil uses in real life. So we have the higher defence line, also the higher line of engagement. This is to try and win back the ball in the opponent's half, also not allowing the opponent to play from the back. For the defensive width, we have left it on the standard defensive width, which will be set accordingly to the team's mentality. For the marking and tackling, we are using tighter marking because we want to approach the opponent as soon as possible when they have the ball, but also we want to cut off the passing lanes. Cutting off passing lanes is very, very important to this tactic as we are not going to be aggressive in our tackles. The way we are going to win the ball back is by being close to the opponent and trying to nick it, winning the interception. For the pressing intensity, we have gone for the more urgent pressing intensity and we are preventing the short goalkeeper's distribution. Of course, we want to be in the opponent's face, trying to win the ball back, not being too extreme with it, of course, because we still need that little bit of defensive structure, which is one of the reasons why Alguacil is playing the 4-1-4-1. This gives him the option to be tight and have many, many bodies in midfield whilst also trying to win the ball back a little bit more urgently. So now that is the tactic covered, we are going to look at some statistics. As you can see here for the pass completion ratio, we have a 92% pass completion ratio. For our tackles one, that is also a high number with 83%. Our goals per game is 1.97, which is very, very close to two. Our expected goals per game is one goal per game. Our conceded goals per game is just below one. And our expected goals against again is just below one. Whilst we are having 14 shots per game, I'm having a 45% shots on target ratio. You can also see here with the attacking efficiency that Real Sociedad were both aggressive and clinical comparing to the other teams in the league. And of course, as you can see here, which should which should have been the main thing I started before the statistics is that we actually won the league. For me, I was actually very, very happy with a top four finish. It seemed that once this tactic actually clicked with the players, we then became a very, very difficult team and we went on a very, very good run. We played 38 games, winning 31 of those, drawing two, losing five. The games we lost against was Real Madrid, Seville, Valencia, Barcelona and Ibar. And as you can see, all of those games were away from home. We managed to score 75 in the league, which is the most goals, whilst conceding only 22, which is joint best in the league. Our average possession was on 55%. Our expected goals for was 53.51 we also completed the most crosses in the league for me i feel that is because we created so much space for both fullbacks they had the time and space to then put in a perfect perfect delivered cross we also have the best pass completion in the league whilst being fourth with the most passes completed when it comes to interceptions, you can see that we were very, very good with interceptions. So our cutting off passing lanes worked very, very well. We were second in the league with the most interceptions. And when it comes to clean sheets, we had 22 clean sheets, which again, we were second best defence in the league when it comes to clean sheets. We never conceded a single goal from set piece either. We conceded zero from corners. We conceded zero from direct free kicks. And we also conceded zero from indirect free kicks, which is very, very impressive. Looking at our squad stats, Oyarzabal finished the season with the most goals scored in the league. William Jose came in second with 15. Alexander Ishak also scored 13, while Yanazai scored 11. And Ander managed to score 10. 
when it comes to the assists, Yanazai got the most assists with our left back getting eight and our right back also getting eight and our very, very versatile footballer in Porto also managed to get eight assists. Our top performers this season was our centre-back, Robin Lemnormand, our left-back Munoz, both our full-backs, our winger Yanazai, Ishak and William Jose all had fantastic, fantastic seasons. Now, before I leave you guys, there is something that I must must stress this is very very important for me i feel that this is very very important for all the tactics that will be created in football manager 2021 now is the training one thing i have learned that tactic familiarity is very very important this year so when it comes to training individuals please make sure that you are training the players in the roles that they are expected to play within the tactic that is very very important also preseason will be very very important you need to have a full preseason with the tactic you need to play your main players make them get used to the tactic as your team leaders will be very very influential if you are playing tactical styles or giving them instructions that they aren't very very happy with just remember they are the biggest influence on the pitch if they can't influence the game then you might actually struggle to get your style of play across but but thank you for watching thank you for listening to my very very first tactic recreation of the year it has been a pleasure to share it with you guys please if you are new or you haven't yet do not forget to subscribe it has been rdf it has been a pleasure stay safe peace